My next guest, Henry Ergus, an internationally renowned economist and contributor to The Australian, wrote a stirring column about the Jew-hating Hamas supporters who disgraced Sydney's streets in the days after the Israeli attacks. He likened those supporting the terror groups or allowing them to spew their race-baiting hatred on the steps of the Opera House as exemplifying what philosopher Hannah Arendt called the banality of evil, the everyday thoughtlessness that conflates victims and terrorists until one cannot tell right from wrong. Henry Ergus is here. Welcome to the program. And I have to say thank you for such a brilliant column. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, you write that just as it was absolutely impossible for the Allies to make peace with Hitler, so it is impossible to make peace with Hamas. And yet, Henry, in the wake of the terror attacks, we're seeing the likes of Greta Thunberg, Hollywood celebrities and politicians backing the Free Gaza movement. Why do you think there is this lack of criticism of Hamas? Well, it, it stuns me because Hamas and its controller, Iran, uh, has always been very explicit about what its objectives are, and its main objective is the destruction of the state of Israel. And there's a fundamental difference in that respect between Hamas, Iran, Hezbollah on the one hand, and what happens in most armed conflicts on the other, which is that the objectives of Iran, Hamas, and Hezbollah are extermination. It's not territorial readjustment. It's not any changes at the margin. It's not any objectives of that kind. It's the physical destruction of a state and its people. And so I'm amazed that anyone believes that you can make peace with uh, such a movement any more than you could make peace with Hitler, whose objective was the destruction of Western freedom as we know it. Henry, you write that there will no doubt be ever louder calls from Hamas supporters for an immediate ceasefire. And you quote the great military theorist Karl von Kleisweitz, who says that every aggressor is a lover of peace. He wants his aggression to go unopposed. I think this is such a powerful line, and I've quoted it this week on the program. Can you expand on this point, please, and, and why a ceasefire is unacceptable in the wake of the brutality that we've seen? Well, you know, the obvious objective of a ceasefire is to allow Hamas to regroup, rearm, and prepare its next offensive. And a ceasefire would essentially allow Hamas to get off stop free. Um, that's what it's intended to do, and that's what it would do. It's as absurd a proposal, fundamentally, as it would have been for uh, the Allies to accept a ceasefire in the face of the Nazis and the Japanese. Uh, on the contrary, the Allies throughout that war, which was again a war for survival, a war which was going to determine whether Western freedom survived or perished. Uh, in that war, their entire strategy was to maintain the pressure, maintain the fight, up to the point at which the enemy had no choice but to capitulate. And in exactly the same way, uh, what is at stake in Gaza is whether Gaza will remain under the control of a group whose whole purpose is to destroy the state of Israel and its people, or will be free of that group and mm. hence have a chance for a better, more prosperous future. Mm. Such powerful points, Henry. We saw this hospital bombing scandal, of course, about a week ago when Israel was very quickly blamed for bombing a hospital at 
the media believed the Hamas lies. In fact, it was Palestinian Islamic Jihad responsible. The hospital wasn't bombed. It was a car park. 50 people died, not 500. What's your view of the anti-Israel bias that we're seeing in some international media outlets? Well, it's so sad and predictable. It's sad because you would think that the, the function of the media is to try to the extent possible, even in difficult circumstances, such as those of an armed conflict or a war, to discern the truth and to do so without fear or favor. Um, and it's predictable because we've seen this time and again. This has been the modus operandi of the ABC, for example, for the last 30 years. Uh, it wasn't always like that. There was a time when the ABC was far more objective in its reporting. But now what we have is the rise of uh, journalism as a form of activism. And the mm -hmm. boundaries between journalism and activism have blurred. And the whole ideal of journalistic objectivity has disappeared. That's particularly shocking, obviously, uh, when the activism is being funded by taxpayers mm. who have no choice exactly. but to underwrite that bias. And that's exactly what we see, particularly at the ABC, but also mm -hmm. at many of its counterparts overseas. Exactly. And we played some clips from the ABC earlier in the show tonight that were egregious. Henry Ogus, I thank you very much for your insight, your brilliant writing and your brilliant commentary just now. Thank you so much.